Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and we got to talk about Lil Wayne's Mona Lisa, the crazy true stories behind it, and not to mention the Kendrick Lamar effect that took it to a whole nother level. Now, if somehow you haven't heard that song, get up out under that rock that you've been sleeping under. It's on Lil Wayne's Carter 5, a very much so standout track on it. But the first story that really makes that song even more interesting is Superhead. Like Wayne will call the house at three, four o'clock in the morning and I will answer. And if he says, I'm at the skate park or I'm here, I will get up and I will go. That's what's going to happen. And you gotta be okay with that. And it has happened, you know. His so, so basically you'd be in bed with your husband. Mm -hmm. Wayne would call in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and you would go see Wayne. Yes, and I'd be gone for days. You'd be gone for days. Absolutely. That seems pretty obvious now, but a lot of people didn't make that connection even though that interview itself was pretty viral in itself. At Godwin Mitchell was the first person to really make a tweet. He said he had to rewatch that interview after listening to Mona Lisa and the tweet went viral, putting a lot of people on notice. This plays huge into the Kendrick Lamar effect and how he helped songs go viral after their initial shelf life, but I'll get into that after the second thing about Mona Lisa that's a true story, but it's just a little odd. A random rich guy that pretty much inserted himself into hip hop for a couple of years named Martin Screlly actually purchased the Carter 5 and played it on the internet. Not full of songs, but he did play snippets. Mona Lisa was one of those songs. He even said that it was going to be a two disc project. So you can't necessarily even say that Lil Wayne just put so many songs on it because it took this long. Do I hear Mona Lisa? That's the best song in the damn thing, man. And this just clarifies yet again that that song had been done some time ago because not only did he play this in 2017 when he uploaded that video, Infamous, one of the producers who actually worked on the project, particularly he worked on Mona Lisa, actually revealed in a DJ Booth interview that when they recorded the song and when Kendrick got his verse on, it was a to pimp a butterfly, Kendrick. So that's probably at least 2015. And he said that eventually he was probably gonna leak that song because he just felt like it was way too good for the culture not to have for that amount of time. But speaking of to pimp a butterfly, Kendrick, let's roll back into the Kendrick Lamar effect. One of the gifts that Kendrick Lamar has is the fact that he's primed his audience to really dissect his lyrics and look for stories even deeper than most audiences do for artists at this level. And when this happens, you get this huge word of mouth effect. You get the initial push of a project, you get the initial push of a song, but then after that, people start to listen and then it starts to market itself because people keep talking about it. They're trying to figure out the mystery. They're wondering what's the story behind the story. When Vlad did that Corinne Steffens or Superhead interview, whatever you want to call her, it was 2015 which once again lends to that verse being done at that time. So he actually played on a story that was popular at the time, but he talked about it in a way that of course left some mystery. Corinne Stephens not only mentions that Lil Wayne has a distinct ringtone in her phone, she says she had one of his songs as her ringtone. But moving on to other examples, if you look at the Kendrick Lamar single with the heart part four, when he dropped that, at one point in the verse, he said, hey, when I drop my album, it's gonna be wild. One classic came right back, another classic right back. My next album, the whole industry on the ice pack. Then at the end of it, he said, yo, y'all got till April 7th to get shit together. You know what time it is, any up, this is him forever. Y'all got till April the 7th to get your shit together. Let's get it. He let people know that he had an album coming. He sparked the conversation. You were already ready and just happy to hear Kendrick music, but then he dropped some jewels, some gems in there, and not those kind of gems where you're like, yo, that's deep. He drops gems like golden nuggets for you to collect and makes you want to look for more hidden treasure. Not to mention that that project was damn. And think about all of the things that went on along with damn. People thought it was two album. And then people said you could play it forwards and backwards. That was technically the two albums. So another one's not coming out. And then you can look at Duckworth on that project, which actually alluded to a true story between the confrontation of Top Dog and his dad. And if that confrontation went another way, Kendrick Lamar might not even be here let alone be here working with the guy that almost possibly could have taken his dad out. There's always these hidden treasures to keep the energy going around his music. And he plays with it and the fans love it and it creates this entire energy. It works as if it's another marketing campaign. There's not 
any other artist on that level that has that effect. There's definitely some underground artists who have some small fan bases that do that. And if you can continue to do that in your music as you grow, it'd be dope to see more artists that have that kind of relationship with their fans and the media always keeping people guessing. But I want to know what you guys think as always. What are some other artists that do stuff like that that you like? What do you think about these true stories behind Lil Wayne's Mona Lisa? And of course, as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.